I'm Drew. I'm Rich. And I'm Charles. And we're Midnight, Midnight Hellion. Hellion from Trenton, New Jersey. And you're watching Local, Local Band, Band Smokeouts. Smokeout. Teams came out at the same time, and uh, I'm the only person in the world that picked the Microsoft team side. So, uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if well, you do. I'm always, I'm always down to try stuff. I appreciate you joining. Uh, do me a favor uh, introduce yourself. Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment, and plug and promote anything and everything. Sure. Um... I'm Eric. I play drums in a band called Face Yourself. I also run a video production company called Square Up Studios. Currently located in Rockham County, New York. We're right outside New York City. And um, yeah, a bunch of cool stuff happening with Face Yourself. And I'm excited to be here. Did you say Square Up Studios? Yeah, uh, Square Up Studios. We shoot music videos. We've done almost 500 music videos in the past eight years oh my honestly. gosh 500 music videos that's crazy i want to talk more about that in a bit but uh so so the band dude uh, there's not a whole lot of information on you guys like if you go to the spotify you go to the bottom there's nothing you go on the facebook uh page it has very very little tidbits so there's not a lot of information i could find on you guys so i want to learn some more about the band which we absolutely love first how did you find yaz and how uh how did you find the rest of the bandmates um so first of all, we like being a little mysterious. We are a pretty new band and we're kind of like just letting out information as we go. We're doing interviews and kind of dispersing the information in little sections, Reddit and everything. But um, yeah, so I started the band with, with Tom. He's He was our first guitar player. Uh, we had some demos and I haven't been in a band for almost 10 years, but I've been working with a lot of bands and a lot of bigger bands for quite some time now. Um, so I put out like a soft feeler, like I didn't actually say that I was starting a band. I was just very loosely like, oh, I think I want to start a band. Anybody know any vocalists? And like right after I said that, I just had like a flood of messages, just tons of just people being like, hey, I'm down to do vocals. I'm down to do vocals. Um, we were just crazy shocked and we sent them a couple demos we had. Um, we got a few vocalists that were just like absurdly good, like as good as my boy will like Lorna Shore type shit like just so fucking good we just couldn't even believe it um and we auditioned a few of them and the <laughs> demos are just unreal even still now I listen to them just like Jesus Christ um but one of the people that we were talking to ended up being like you know what sorry it's not gonna work out with me I got a kid or something along those lines coming out and um, why did they even audition this girl out why did they even audition it, Oh, but they said well, I, you I should check this band. girl out. Like they, yeah, right. You should check out Yaya, and they sent me Yaya. So we have like a string of really good vocalists and a couple bigger names. People, I I won't say who, but the couple bigger names that are in established bands um, that have sent demos. And then we have like this random girl, and so I was like, wow, yeah, she's pretty good, and she's getting like a lot of weird messages on her videos. Like, it just stood out to me that, like, people were saying really just hateful shit, like, just misogynistic shit, like, right on her her, her vocal covers. Um, and I thought that was so weird. And I reached out to her, and she was familiar with my work and everything. She auditioned. And as soon as she auditioned, I was just like, yo, guys, like, I don't know if we should go with so-and-so. Like, there's something really cool about this girl. Um and she really wasn't the most established. So it was like some girl in France. And um, I kept calling her and I kept doing like, you know, consultations, whatever you call it, interviews. And it, she just kept checking out to be such a great person. And, you know, in November, I, I, I called her and I was like, you got the gig. And I, I like spoke to her parents who were in France and they like popped the bottle and it was just really magical. So you like flew it, out to I, I like really to, to to say congratulations, you got it? No, 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 no. It was uh, like a call like this. Like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I, we fa we FaceTimed. How um, does that? How do, I know that she's come to New York to do some shows, and I want to ask about Christian Roach, who's a good friend of ours from Diamonds to Dust. But uh, how does that work out being like the long distance travel? I know that must get like a little complicated, but but you guys are doing shows, so how do you pull that off? 
Well, first of all, Christian's the one who referred us, Yaya. Okay. <laughs> the boy. Okay. So, the yeah, boy. Christian Roach is a good Thanks a good being, friend of ours, from also from New York. Hell Thanks yeah. Thanks being the, the first feature on our EP. Our first single featured the guy who got us Yaya as, like, a thank you. Um, I also shot um, the Diamonds to Dust videos. So Christian was previously a client of mine. Oh, okay. So you did um, you did Corpus Christi and, uh, and some of the other ones. Hell yeah. Yeah, and I'd always say, I'd be like, why Why did the end of Corpus never go viral? Like, um, I did Lorna Sword to the Hellfire, so I had one of the most viral moments, like, probably in Deathcore history. And I always think, like, why did this dude? So I wanted to feature him. Um, but what were you saying? I There was another question. I that. totally agree, by the um, way. Oh, that, yeah. that ending to Corpus is just absurd. But uh, yeah, so we're we're really familiar with your work, but we didn't we didn't re I didn't realize it until right this second. That's awesome, man! Hell yeah! Uh, but I was asking how yeah. how complicated oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. it because he's in France and you're in New York? Um, well, we fly her out uh, to do all the the content stuff. She's been here three times now in the past three months. Um, flights aren't that bad; they're like four or five hundred bucks. Um, it's it's really nothing crazy, and I have like a pretty nice house. So we can house a ton of people here. We did the two EPs that we have done here and everyone hung out. It was a party. It was a good time. Um, and it really isn't that hard to get her over here. Uh, is, it just sucks I, I guess what I'm asking 10, is, 10 hours. is there, is there plans for her to like permanently move to the band's location when it's like full on tour time or she just flies in for the tour and then flies out? As of right now, she's just flying in. I'd be willing to put money that within a year she'd stay, she'll stay. She she'll stay here. She'll say something otherwise, but I think she's going to live in America very shortly. So let me ask you about uh, about your your main nine to five. How how does one start up a music video company if somebody's watching and they're interested in in going that route as a business? How did you get started? And was is it a connections thing or is it just experimenting with a good camera? How did you get started? Um, well, art is art. I, you know, what you put into it, you get back. I was was actually recording bands for a very long time. And I had, it was like in that phase where like people were starting to get better at recording. Like kids with laptops were kind of making better mixes than I was with like $20,000 with the analog equipment. And I was like kind of seeing it. And I was, I'm always like kind of in tune with that stuff. So I started like just dabbling in other stuff. This was like 2014, 15. And I picked up a video camera. I started doing like vocal covers. I was charging like 150 bucks to record a vocal cover, and and um and a little video for it. And I'd snip it all together. And um, I was starting to get a lot of those, like more so than I was records. Um, like I had a pretty early client, Will Ramos, uh, who was doing a bunch of covers with me, 2015, and he I get. Be doing stuff like that in the basement. Was he still in? Was we like, were still in Monument at the time. No, so he was a freelance guy. He's like, yo, I gotta get my name out there. I gotta get things going. Um, so we put out a bunch of vocal covers, and then we auditioned him for a band called Awakened Providence. Um, there's another deathcore band prior to Monument. I've shot 11 Monument music videos, by the way. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, it was just, I was just doing a lot of covers like that. And I transitioned from doing audio to video just kind of by accident. I just, all those records I had done, I was just like, yeah, let's do a video for that 400 bucks, whatever. And we'd shoot videos and I just took it and I ran and just never looked back. Uh, so my advice back to the question is if you have a passion for something or you're good at something, um, make it your side gig until you can make it your full time gig. Did you bring the hot sauce today, sir? You look like someone. You no, know, I didn't know what you meant by the hot. Okay, so what I like I to do. I know what you meant by that, but I, I am in my kitchen, so I'll just grab it right now. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> so here's the thing. I like to do a trivia segment. I like my interviews to be a little bit different than everybody else's. So we 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 ask that you bring hot sauce. You're grabbing it, and I have a bunch of hot sauces here. But you get to pick the trivia topic. What movie or TV show have you seen more? than anything that if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, it's impossible I stump you. Um, I'm pretty bad when it comes to film, but my best guess would be Trailer Park Boys. Be the oh, best hell possible. yeah. That, that is that is a fantastic. I've seen 
almost probably I haven't seen every movie, but I've definitely seen like every single episode of the show. Julian, <laughs> he always has Julian ice in the glass, no matter no matter what. There's always like a cube or two oh, in there. Shit, yeah, I should, I should <laughs> grab a fucking. Let me know if I'm, I'm my quality's giving out because I'm walking away. But oh no, you're good. Um, all right, yeah. So yet again, I'm pretty bad when it comes to these type of things, but um, you know, give it a whirl. Got my Julian glass. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I have ice though. <laughs> Uh, let's say, let's say all of a sudden, uh, you guys get signed and it's the perfect deal. Uh, it's everything you want. You get to keep your masters. You get a crazy amount of money as an advance. You can't upgrade your home. You can't buy more gear. What is there? Is there something expensive you've always wanted to buy? And now all of a sudden the label's just like, bro, Eric, here's a million dollars advance per band member. What, what are you buying? Dopamine. I'm gonna buy straight up dopamine because that's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like we're, I'm pretty happy with my life. Uh, things are going re- correct. Um, I guess Tom would probably buy a car. Yaya would probably buy a house in America. Uh, Corey would buy a lot of insulin because he's paying out the ass for for his diabetes. Um, Kyle would probably buy a bunch more booze. I don't. I don't know. It's, 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 you got to think about it. It's a tough content. one. Is there? It you, is a tough one. Tell me about the worst gig you ever had. Everybody has a worst show ever. Everything went wrong, and how did you learn from that worst gig? Worst gig or worst job, like square uh, up or performance? If you have a good answer for both, we'll go both. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have I had a ton of horror stories from square up. Um, I've like kicked people off set for getting too drunk or like doing too many drugs um but i think you were asking gig wise so gig wise in like 2008 I was in a deathcore band and we played a new song and it was like halfway through we just forgot the whole song and then stopped <laughs> it was just like <laughs> the most embarrassing, embarrassing it was that I've new it was that before. new you just you just forgot yeah. Yeah, it was like 2008 so we didn't have a click track we didn't have samples like we just kind of just played and we we're just like oh what's next and we stopped that shit was embarrassing Give me one. Is there is there another horror story that doesn't involve alcohol or drugs? But you don't have to name the band or anything. But just the band just wants an impossible shot, but you pulled it off. But at the time, it just seemed impossible. Um, an impossible shot. That's a tricky one because I'm really good at saying no to things that are just ridiculous. I've I've had ridiculous requests. Like I've been asked to like. CGI bands on the pirate ships or like remove somebody's face, um, stuff like that. That's like impossible shit. Uh, I can't put you on a pirate ship. If maybe if you get me like two grand, I could rent a pirate ship. Maybe <laughs> I could figure <laughs> that out. But um, yeah, just stuff like that. Um, no, I'm pretty good at, at saying no to that type of stuff. I got you. Let's do some trivia. Sure. In Trailer Park Boys. Something crazy happens to Miss Peterson's dog. What happens to Miss Peterson's dog that involved Ricky? It should be a hint because you know it involved Ricky. I don't even remember who Miss Peterson is. (laughs) That's how bad I am, dude. She's somebody in the park, but it involved Ricky, so that's kind of your hint. All right, so I'm gonna guess then. Uh, Ricky stole the dog and sold it to somebody for for weed. Unfortunately, that's not correct. <laughs> Ricky has a tray full of hash brownies. He loves his hash, and uh, the dog eats all the hash brownies. So eat, eats all eats all the hash. I remember that episode now. God damn it! <laughs> I'm gonna do some hot sauce with you. I got some. Uh, it's blurred out. I don't know why, but uh, ghost pepper wing sauce. What do I gotta do. I gotta just. T- I gotta take a hit of hot sauce. Just take a little quick, quick dab right there. There we go. You're a good sport. Yeah. Sucks. Thanks, what, I like hot sauce. What is uh? What's the what's the goals for the rest of the band for the rest of the year for the rest of 2023? Can we expect a couple more singles? I know there's a lot of stuff that bands can't tell us, but uh, what are you allowed to tell me? Um. Uh, well, I. I pretty much can tell you a lot of stuff. I know we got another EP done, mastered, 
coming out this summer. You guys are pumping um, them out, dude. Very hype. Pumping them out. <laughs> Hold on one second. Uh, I got to send to voicemail. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yet again, um, new to the this app. No worries. Um, yeah, so we got another EP coming out. Um, it the We released a single about two weeks ago called Death Reflection. Um, that's the second track on the EP. Um, should set the tone a little bit more compared to the first EP. First EP was very experimental. There was like a lot of different types of sounds. Um, and we we tried like a, a lot of different types of heavy, if that makes sense. While this record is just, I would say, more on the heavier side. Like a lot of people liked our closing track, Gross Bagar, which was very, very heavy. Um, and yeah, we just kind of like, I think, leaned into a heavier sound and let Yaya kind of really do her thing a little more on the second EP. And then we're in the process of writing more music, which will come out at some point too. That is um, awesome. Way to hustle, brother. But yeah, we, yep, we got um, more music coming out, more videos coming out. Um, definitely going to play a show or two. Um, we've met with a lot of people in the industry to see what could be, what could happen with face yourself. Uh, we've only been doing it for three months now, but we've been, you know, graced with some ridiculous opportunities and great connections and people that I've been working with for a long time back us. Um, so yeah, just a lot more of what you guys are already seeing, I would say. Chat wants to know if you're friends with Randy Pascarella. Oh, of course I'm friends with Randy. I was, I still want to, can I see the chat by the way? I don't even know how this works. Like who's here? No, there's no chat um, in Twitch. I'm sorry. Uh, Teams oh. is just, we're live on Twitch right now. But, oh, okay. So they can yeah, only see Randy. me and you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so the the you won't be able to see the chat that way, unfortunately. Very cool. Oh yeah, Randy's a homie. He was actually, um, he came into my he came here. He partied with us not too long ago. Um, yeah, great dude. I, I did a bunch of videos for his band Eye the Fire, and also if not if not for me, um, if, if I, I were you. Yeah, if I were you. Um, Hell yeah. yeah I did. How'd you how'd you break like, your finger? Three videos. <laughs> I kid you not. This was today. This today. Was today. Uh, today. Um, I almost. I was almost gonna bail just out of being pissed off. Uh, it's not broken. It's. It's called mallet finger. But um, I basically got off the phone with with a with a booking agent that was just offering us stuff, and I got so hyped that I came back and I was just running through the set, just back to back to back to back, and um, yeah, just really trashed my finger like, you just picked up a mallet and said smash it. all of a sudden mallet finger yes oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so i'm probably out for like two weeks but uh it, it is what it is how would you prefer someone contact you for your video services just go to square up's website or just hit you up personally yeah a lot of people hit me up personally I'm, I'm pretty active on all the social media stuff and i do a lot on the face yourself page so i'm usually online like five or six times a day i check but uh just hit me up on messenger um messenger email square up any of that stuff you, it's pretty easy to get in contact with me my final question for you sir and i appreciate your time thank you so much for doing this is uh give me the best it is called local band smokeout so we try to seek advice every now and then from for local bands that are just starting is there a mistake you made at some point in your career that you don't want a just now starting band to make? Yeah, I, I think people, this happened to me in the MySpace days. You get too caught up with the people around you and you don't necessarily focus on the type of music you want to be playing. You don't focus on the culture or you get too caught up in um, the super, super minute details and not focusing on the big picture. Um, but just generally just being authentic and you know just writing music you want to play and being around good people that's a very key component you're you're only as strong as your weakest link so having a good team is is crucial in any aspect of life chad is at wants me to ask one more question uh oh no do you have you worked with promises unsaid before um i haven't shot them um but i i shot a video for their singer uh he did like a cover um, was that the one with his girlfriend? You don't have to, ru you don't have to rush me out. By the way, I'm I'm good till about nine. But um, he, no, he he did a cover. Um, it was him and and my and Cameron, I believe. Uh, it was like a drum cover vocal thing. Um, I'd have yeah, to I, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Now. Hell yeah! Uh, from... Yeah, super cool dude. Great singer, man. 
Cameron from For Those Who Doubt, maybe? Yeah, it was, I can't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, they also recorded that with Randy Pasquarello, the dude you mentioned a second ago, too. I don't know where you're from, by the way, but Randy's like super OG from our scene. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually from California, but I'm born and raised in Florida. But we have we get sent a ton of music cool. from Randy, the stuff that Randy's done. Uh, as so we're Bing Hampton area and uh, just in general, New York, a lot of metal comes from there that gets sent our way. So we're, we're pretty familiar. Yeah, our, our scene is ridiculous. Like people here don't realize how insane it is. But then when you go to any other scene and they know like all the local bands over here, you kind of realize like, oh, OK, we have something ridiculous going here. And our it's just powerhouse the east coast is just so strong with that said though we do have our music mixed by somebody in california though who who mixes it um ashtone audio matt thomas and then we get mastered by joel we self-produce our music but we send it off <laughs> we know we know matt of ashtone audio also hell yeah it's a small world dude that's cool yeah so actually one of my guitar players i have three um is the is matt's guitarist too so there was a weird connect to oh, that cool. on on the like ep uh, my bad i didn't mean to interrupt you on the on the ep that's you're, done you're for face yourself that uh, is in the works of coming out is there any features oh. on that one hell yeah <laughs> so i've been in a thing to feature square up artists at the ass <laughs> um i've the first ep had uh christian shane um and and um Oh my god, why why is it blank? We have yeah, we have three square up artists and this one we got we got some more square up artists too. And we already featured Isaac, who plays in a band called Funeral Wake. Um and he was on the track Death Reflection. Hell yeah, badass. So what we got we we got some more. There's a lot of homies that I'm trying to shout out with the Face Yourself project in it. No matter what level we're at, whether we're a super local band or if we happen to make it a little higher, I'm always gonna feature the the homies the best of my ability. Hell yeah. Uh, where in the world have you never been to or played that is the one country that you want to play more than anywhere else? This is from a uh, band I'm perspective. I'm super hyped on. I, I want to play Australia. We we have already a pretty big following over there. Um, I, I'd be happy playing wherever, personally. But Australia, Canada, um, yeah, really Australia, like, or anywhere in Europe, it would just be so sick. And I could really see it happening in the near future, which is unbelievable. But we'll see. So it, it, when that happens, I think it's going to happen for you guys too. Uh, when that happens, does your team run Square Up? Are you still doing it from the road, from a laptop? How does that work balancing the two? When that when that part so, of being so busy with Face Yourself comes about? So that, that was a big thing that I was thinking about actually when I was trying to start the project. But... um. I, I just bought like a six thousand dollar laptop and I could I could handle eight K footage on the road now, which is insane. So I'm actually training myself to not edit on a computer and do all the six thousand edits on like a hard drive. Six thousand. It's a beefy boy. But honestly, it's kind of changing my life. I did all the face yourself videos pretty much the day they came out on the laptop just out of like principle. Would that be like going to the Mac website and just clicking yes to everything? Or are you, is that like an alien, <laughs> Alienware custom build? No, no, I'm uh, unfortunately a Final Cut Pro user, so I'm stuck in the Apple ecosystem. Gotcha. Yes to everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes to everything, and then just lower the hard drive space a little bit. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, dude, I, but, I am I am unfortunately out of time. We, we do, like... This is like a three hour show, but we have like a bunch of other stuff to do. But uh, uh, man, you were absolutely awesome. I learned a ton today. I didn't know that we have such a small world connection and the artists that we know. Um, I learned a lot <laughs> about the band. I'm excited about the EP coming out. You said you got a couple of features going, new singles. Can, is there a rough timetable of when the EP will drop? I know some singles will come first, but can we expect it before the end of the year? Or are we talking like early spring this of next summer? Year? Oh, it's coming this quick. Summer. It's coming quick. Yeah, it's summer. Hell it's yeah. Anything. <laughs> Excellent. And if you ever have any more questions too, man, it's an honor to be here. And I'll hop on whenever you just got to text me. I appreciate you, brother. Got you locked in the phone for sure. Stay safe. Oh, yeah, man. Keep hustling. Sound like a man that is hustling left and right. Keep grinding. It is definitely paying off. We support the band. We support Square Up. Cheers, dude. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, man. Yet again, if somebody bails, fucking hit me up and I'll be here.
I got you for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, right. Eric of Face Yourself at Square! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> Cheers, brother. All right, see ya. Hi, what's up, Welcome to the local band smokeout.